We welcome you into another episode of the best podcast available. I'm Jason Gibbs. He's Andrew Gribble. Neither one of us remembered our sunscreen. And for the last two days, we have cooked out on the Cross Country Mortgage Campus as the Browns and Giants wrap up two days of joint practices. And Gribbs uh, thought yesterday was a hot one. Uh, Friday proved to be a much warmer day than I was banking on yet again. Yeah. The orange is oranger on my face right now. I mean, it's just, it's brutal. I mean, it was, it was, it was hot. And I think that it was about probably, I would guess about five to seven degrees warmer today than it was yesterday. And I, I thought the intensity matched it. And I, I thought both from an intensity standpoint, the player teams came out hot today from just a chippiness standpoint, firepower. But I also thought by the end, it looked like two teams that were tired. I mean, it looked like they were exhausted, especially in that two minute drill period where neither offense got much of anything going. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it was just, uh, I think the team, I, I think both these teams really got better over these two, two practices. I mean, these were the most, by far the most intense practices we've seen all training camp. And these were further evidence on why you do these. I mean, this was just, this is, this is what gets you ready for the regular season uh, in my opinion, and maybe gets you ready for that. Whenever we do see the starters in that dress rehearsal, if we ever do, this is some good preparation and, and really kind of a good litmus test for this Browns team. You had brought it up on Cleveland Browns Daily earlier in the week that maybe these joint practices have more of a purpose and are better off than these preseason games that we're experiencing. Well, I mean, at least in this case, you're yeah. looking at it this week. We just heard from Kevin Stefanski saying mo the majority of the starters are not going to play in Sunday's game. And this is exactly what happened two years ago uh, when the Browns went to Indianapolis that the, the starters didn't play in the game. So I'm seeing from the coach's standpoint, they're looking at what their starters are able to do out there and getting some good evaluations. And then they get to Sunday and they're good. I think they, they feel, and this will be an, another opportunity, another showcase for some second and third string guys to make an impression and, and fight for some roster spots, which I think is, I, I get kind of annoyed when I hear about joint practices replacing preseason games. I, I think you can have both. And I, I think that that's the, the purpose. They, they both serve a really good purpose. Uh, and I, I think that the, within the con, this is like the closest way you can get to an old school camp without being old school in your ways. And I think that's that's what we got to saw on the field today. And I think you'll if you're a starter like Baker Mayfield, you got in a good good week's work here, uh, and you'll be able to watch comfortably on Sunday. Day one, I, I think we can all agree went the Browns' way in a big way, I, and I think that maybe the red carpet and maybe a few of the other things might have lit a little bit of a fire under the Giants on day two because you said it, on day two the Giants came ready to play. And I think they de they delivered the first couple blows, but then, you know, as practice wore on, guys definitely got a little more fatigued. But day one definitely went the Browns' way and, and in a big way. Yeah, I, I was focused mostly on what the Browns offense was doing. I was on that field day, and it was just, that, like I said, the intensity, the firepower was there from the Giants. And I, I think it was most apparent with their pass rush, which I think the Giants defensive line, that's probably the strength of their entire defense, maybe the biggest strength of their entire team. Uh, so that, that's a really good defensive line that the Browns are going up against. Uh, and you had practice today where J.C. was not practicing at center, so you had Nick Harrison there with the first-team offense, and then he gets hurt. And you're down to Blake Hance as your as your starting center with the rest of your offensive line, and I, I think it just seemed like that the throws were a little bit rushed. The, the the receivers weren't getting as open as they were the previous day. You still had some good good completions down the field. I thought Jarvis Landry was exceptional these last couple of days and, and made catches in both of these practices. Uh, and I thought the Browns were good in a goal line period as well, but. The second group particularly did not have as much success as they did the previous day. You had your first turnover of the two days on an interception there at, with on a pass to Demetri Felton. And it just, just wasn't, things weren't coming as easy and that's good. I mean, this was, I think the giants didn't like how they looked maybe yesterday and they, they came back uh, kind of just with, a, I would just say a lot of fire today. A lot of, they just came out hot and they, they played that way on defense. I, I, I don't think it was the other way offensively. I thought the, the Browns defense still played pretty well. Uh, so it was just, it was more in terms of the Browns offense versus the Giants defense. And that Browns defense was shorthanded yet again. Uh, over the last two days, the injury bug has continued to bite this defense. Uh, you know, uh, Jacob Phillips is down and, and going to be out for the year, mo most likely. 
not not official, but we, we think that's probably going to be the case. Uh, you take a look at Porter Gustin going to the locker room today, Greedy Williams uh, leaving early and going to the locker room, although it's not expected to be anything serious with Greedy. Uh, and then Nick Harris, as you mentioned, with that the, uh, the left leg injury, and he was done for the day as well. But on the defensive side of the football, you had to bring in a couple linebackers <laughs> because you just you need some bodies to close out this uh, preseason. Yeah, I mean, the linebacker position, basically going back to last Saturday's preseason game, you have Mac with the shoulder injury. He's getting back in the swing of things, but he still wasn't really a full, full, full go. But it, you dodged a bullet with what he had there. But then Jacob Phillips has the biceps injury. Then Sione Taki Taki pulls his hamstring on Thursday. He wasn't practicing today. And then you still, Tony Fields has not seen the field uh, at all uh, since, since injuring his foot uh, before everyone reported for camp. So you had the bodies at linebacker there. So when we, when we saw that first defense out there, you had Anthony Walker surrounded by Elijah Lee and Jamar Uwusu Kormo. And they, they actually played really well. I thought Elijah Lee was everywhere today, uh, especially in the 11-11 periods. He was really good. But the other area, too, where you get back Jadavian Clowney and Miles Garrett on defense, but they weren't participating in team drills. So when you lined up with Gustin out, you had Cameron Malvo uh, and Joe Jackson as, as the first defensive ends uh, with that group. So – a mixed bag. You've got some guys back this week. Ronnie Harrison, Miles, Jadavion Clowney. Those guys really matter, and they're back and uh, in, in better spots than they were at this time last week. That's the good news. It just made for some tricky moments in practice, but I think that makes the defense's effort all the more impressive because the Giants weren't getting anything down the field. They were dinking and dunking when they could, and even when they were dinking and dunking, they weren't really getting much. So it was, it, it was a really good day for uh, the defense again. Uh, and I just think this Browns defense is playing with a different attitude and it, the depth is showing. And I think it showed really well these last couple of days. You know, one other note, we talk about the linebacker room, Anthony Walker coming back from his own injury and uh, he's back in team drills, but it's still going to take a few days and maybe a week or so for him to get ramped back up. So I wouldn't, obviously I don't expect to see him on Sunday when the Browns play host to the New York football giants at one o'clock at first energy stadium, who else stood out to you from a defensive side? We talked about Jarvis Landry. I'll get back to the offense in just a minute, but while we're on the defense, who else stood out to you over these two days? Well, I, I thought that Ronnie Harrison and John Johnson looked really good at, at the safety position. And I think that's what you wanted to see, especially with Grant Delpit going down earlier this week with the hamstring injury. So those two played really well, especially in the, the seven on seven goal line period were given Daniel Jones all sorts of trouble. Uh, but I, I mentioned Elijah Lee. He seemed like he was all over the place. I saw Sheldon Day blowing up a play in, in the backfield there as well. He's had a really good camp. Uh, I just thought they, they just brought a lot of pressure on Daniel Jones today. And it, it just it made things difficult. And they really just did a good job of keeping everything in front of them. I, I thought that was the, the, the real big thing. And it just, you know, the Browns took some shots down the field. The Giants just couldn't do it. I mean, it was just there just wasn't the openings there. And uh, the, the the goal line period at the end today, uh, some penalties were, were the issue for the Browns defense. And, and that's something you got to get cleaned up. Uh, but it, they they didn't really make things particularly easy for the Giants to get into the end zone. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with that. And it's funny because leading up to the draft, our, our big concern was the defensive tackle room. Who's going to play defensive tackle on this football team? Now it's this. It might be this the deepest and healthiest part of this defense right now. Yeah. You've got everyone pretty much available at that spot right now. And it's it, you, the team moved on from Damian square earlier this year, earlier this week. And so that's one fewer player out there, but no matter who's out there, it seems like they're playing pretty well. I mean, Billings just keeps looking better and better in the middle there. Malik Jackson is playing really well. Uh, it's just kind of become a vocal force for this defense. And, and I think the, the, the guy that's flying under the radar, I mentioned him earlier, Sheldon day. I mean, he, he started against the Jaguars, got the sack on the first play, uh, a veteran is at a really good camp. I think he's in the mix uh, for, for a spot here because he just keeps playing so well. I mean, that's a good group and it's, it's good that they're healthy because the defensive ends have not been, and, and that's just, that that's helped, helped uh, alleviate some of the issues, but uh, I'll be most interested to see what the Browns look like from a defensive end standpoint uh, Sunday against the Giants because there's just not not a ton of options at that spot if, if you go into this game without Miles Clowney and, and potentially we'll see with Porter Gustin as well. 
All right. So on the offensive side of the football, again, looking good on Thursday, uh, Richard Hollywood Higgins with a big touchdown catch at the end of practice. Hollywood will join uh, the best podcast available coming up in just a few minutes. We talked about Jarvis Landry's performance. Baker Mayfield, I thought, had a good couple days as well. Yeah, I mean, the the period that he was at his best on Friday was this uh, goal line one on one period. I mean, he he I, I I'd lost track, but I, it just there was a stretch where he was just throwing touchdowns. Every single play was a touchdown. Uh, Jarvis Landry just getting open every single time. He was he even connected with JoJo Natson multiple times. I mean, it was just it was just looking so easy uh, for in that kind of situation. And I thought he was really sharp uh, in that period. I thought he was great in the two minute drill. Uh, the previous day just didn't really get it going in the two minute drill this time. It, it just didn't, things just didn't come as easy. And, and and the Browns stalled out similarly, just like the giants stalled out in the two minute, but just from a training camp standpoint, overall Baker's just looks so much more comfortable this year. Uh, the accuracy has been, been great all, all training camp and someone that uh, I'm more and more comfortable not seeing in these preseason games moving forward. All right. Another guy that I definitely want to shout out because he's had a good couple of days, David Njoku had a monster day on Thursday and again, made some plays today. Yeah. I mean, he's someone I think has looked good all camp too. And it's, he's someone that it's really going to be interesting because I think, I don't think Harrison Bryant's taking a step back. And and I think so all three of those players are going to be key factors in this Browns offense. They they're easy to get for, forgotten because you've got all the, the talent at wide receivers. You got all the talent at running back. Uh, you've got Baker Mayfield on this team, but these are three tight ends that the Browns are going to use and use a lot. And I think that, you're going to have two on the field most of the time. Sometimes you break out three. And I think David has steadily gotten better and better as a blocker. Uh, and I think that he's been he's been someone that seemingly helps you out on the offense when things aren't going well. I think it, when he he's the guy that seems to make things move uh, when the offense is struggling a bit. Like you can target him, get him, get him down the field, uh, down the seam, and he just seems to make catches to get you going. And I, I think we've seen a lot of that uh, in camp so far. And I, I think he's – got something to prove this year. I think he's, he's, he's coming in with a, with a chip on his shoulder. And I think that all three of those Browns tight ends can be problems for teams uh, in the goal line area. All right. P- practices are over. It's time to play a game. Preseason game number two, Sunday, one o'clock at first energy stadium. You can watch it on news five. You can also hear it on the university hospitals, Cleveland Browns radio network. Gribs, give me one one thing on offense, one thing on defense that you need to see this team do better than they did in week one. Maybe it's hard to do based on how well they played last yeah, year. Yeah, I mean the offense is going to be tough to top. I mean that tough to top. So I'll just focus. I'll I'll, I'll steer away from your question a little bit. I'll, I'm going to tell you what thing I'm watching for is and it's something we didn't talk about in this. Demetric Felton played a lot of wide receiver against the Jaguars. Based on what we've seen in practice this week, it looks like he's going to be getting some looks at running back, and I'm I'm curious how he's used in that situation. And if he can continue kind of the momentum he's generated, because I think he's been great in the slot. And now I'm curious to see how he can be deployed as a running back, because as Baker Mayfield said earlier today, this guy's a part of the offense. I mean, this is someone that is, is going to be a factor for the team. And I expect to see more of him uh, from an offensive standpoint. And then defensively, uh, I'm just keeping my eyes on those corners. If we can get greedy back and, and Greg Newsom, these are two guys that, they need the reps and, and and they can get the experience. And I, I think this is uh, Greg had the great moment Thursday in practice. I want to see more of that. I, I think he's been so solid uh, go, going so far. And I think that even in the Jacksonville game, very solid player, uh, doesn't make a lot of mistakes. And, and I, I think that the competition is ongoing. I know Denzel's been out for a while, but these are two players locked in the competition and they're both playing really well. So that's, that's what I'm watching on defense. How long would you keep, let those guys play on Sunday? I'm good with how the Browns did things in Jacksonville. Give me a quarter plus maybe depending on game flow and then just hand it over. I think even with all the injuries, I think you've got the depth to sustain it and and do the same thing. And that Jacksonville game went so well, I would just do the exact same thing. Yeah. And, and I think uh, a guy like Richard LeCount or James Hudson or Tommy Togi, I, you'll probably see them all game. Uh, the bigger question I think will be, will you see JOK the entire game? <laughs> you might have to I mean, honestly, because of the the injuries at the linebacker position you obviously don't want to over overdo it but you're so thin at that position right now I know Meander's got experience in the system I'm sure he can get ready to go by Sunday Willie Harvey's been a guy that's been here two years ago we'll see how up to speed he can get but 
I mean, this JOK was asking for lots of playing time against the Jaguars. He might get the same exact thing uh, against the Giants here. And the other thing to watch, the kicking battle. Now moving to First Energy Stadium and dealing with those wins coming off Lake Erie, even in August. Yeah, I mean, Cody Park has been, outside of that first practice, has been really good. I mean, he made all five of his kicks on Friday in the live setting. I mean, he's been tough to beat, but th this has been, I would say, of all the kicking competitions we've seen, and we see them every year except last year. That was the first year we didn't, didn't have one to watch. This has been the most competitive in terms of guys are making most of their kicks. I mean, we've seen some tough ones in the past where both players are seemingly ma not making their kicks, but outside of that one day, I mean, these guys have been pretty much nails every single day. I mean, so Cody, Cody's making it tough on Chase McLaughlin, but, but Chase is, is, is not letting much wiggle room happen here right now. Yeah. A lot to watch still, even if the starters are not on the field uh on sunday at first energy stadium a lot of positions up for battle and again it, determining how many guys we get, there's a lot of guys that aren't going to make this football team that are going to be playing on other rosters come week one of the nfl season uh so a lot to watch and a lot to take in and we shall see how things progress for more on our joint practices with the new york football giants uh my man andrew gribble had a chance to sit down with Richard Hollywood Higgins, star and maybe one of the heroes from Thursday's big day for the offense. Have a watch and have a listen. All right, we're joined right now on the best podcast available by one of the stars at the end of the Browns Thursday joint practice, Richard Higgins. And Richard, I got to ask, is, is does it feel just as good walking the red carpet uh, on the practice fields at Cross Country Mortgage Campus, or is it is it a little different? Yeah, man, it feels the same, bro. Um, whenever I got a chance to be in the end zone and to do what I do, it's special, you know, and um, just the energy that the, the teammates give me and the love, that the excitement, you know, it's, it's going to touchdown, you know. Um, it's hard to come by, and why not enjoy that moment? Walk me through that play because it just seemed like it, it, it turned into a, even though it was a goal line or a red zone kind of situation, it looked like it turned into kind of a Hail Mary situation. Yeah, so it was kind of funny. Um, Baker told Jarvis to go to the other side, I guess because he's not that tall, and told DPJ to come to the middle. Um, so I kind of like had a, a thought in my mind like, all right, well, he might throw the ball back this way. Um, we're in the two minute drill, it's about 10 seconds left. I told Baker, you already know this, man. You call God, then you can call me. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I showed up and made the play, man. So, Just what was that atmosphere like? Because then just a couple minutes later, Greg gets the interception at the end of practice. I mean, what, how, was that about as, as festive of a practice as, as you've kind of been a part of here? Oh, it's lit, bro. You know, um, the offense feed off the defense, the defense feeding off us. Um, and obviously, bro, we just – having fun at practice and that's that's part of the game bro you got to have fun you got to love what you're doing and everybody we're, we're just building right now and it, it's fun right now bro I'm just wondering you've been through a lot of these joint practices in your time here with the Browns what makes these different for you and what do you get out of these you know this is where you you <laughs> You get to see another team. You get to bang somebody else instead of your own teammates. Um, it, typically, when you're going against your own teammates, they know what you do, how you do it. You get what I'm saying? And when you go against another team, it feels like a game almost, but in a practice setting. So you get a lot of work done. You get one-on-ones. One -on we, we're doing everything we got to do to, to, to just be better at anything possible. You know, um, coaches is doing a hell of a job of – making sure we're, we're looking ready on special teams, offense, defense, it don't matter, bro. So I feel like these joint practices, we, we get a lot out of them. There's a few familiar faces on the Giants, including uh, Jabril Peppers. I mean, what's it been like seeing them back in Berea and, and sharing the practice fields with them? Man, you know, Jabril, when Jabril first got in here, he was a, a loud mouth guy. And seeing him yesterday talk trash to Baker, I was like, man, this dude hasn't changed one bit. Um, it was definitely nice seeing him out there on the field, um, and man, lucks to him, man. And just what, what have you what have you thought about this training camp so far? Just what what you guys have been able to accomplish, and and just what you guys are building toward uh, against the Chiefs. I feel like this training camp has been a grind. You know, this one by far I feel like is 
the hardest one. I would say that because um, it's hot. Don't nobody feel like doing it. We're all out there. Um, we got guys that's hurt. We got to step in. We got to do different things. You know, we got to know every play. We got to know every position. And it's just a grind right now, bro. And we're all bought into it right now. And I got to ask you about, about another player in your receiver's room who I think you might have some some special feelings for and that's Davion Davis just what he's been able to do you, you've been there as a as a late round guy trying to make a squad what has it been like to see what he's been able to do and kind of the magic he had against the Jaguars out there yeah he's he's definitely showing up I can tell you that he's making the plays and he has the confidence right now you know him seeing us go out there and do what we do and him stepping in and knowing that he got the utmost confidence in himself, you know, him, him making one hand catches at um, Sam Houston. He went to Sam Houston, right, if I'm not yep. mistaken. One hand catches. So him just getting his swag back, showing what he can do, man, He he's he's looking real special right now. And then just for you, last one, I know you got to go, but what, what about these next couple preseason games? What do you want to get accomplished and, and what will make you feel ready to go on, on, on September 12th? Honestly, um, me as an individual, I want to work on a couple of things, getting off the ball, um, making sure I'm catching everything, make sure my routes are fundamentally sound, blocking. You know, I just want to be a, a all-around receiver and and just keep perfecting my craft. You know, um, this year is looking promising for us as a team, and I can't wait for the season to get started. All right, Richard, thank you so much. And uh, you might not be able to top this moment from Thursday's practice, but here's to hoping you, you can have another one. Yes, <laughs> sir. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much, Richard. And that's it for this week's edition of the best podcast available. To check out all of our podcasts from training camp, like and subscribe today wherever you get your podcasts. You can also watch all of our episodes on YouTube, youtube.com slash Browns. Thanks to Jeff McDaniel for all his hard work. And thanks for Hollywood Higgins for his time today. We are back with you next week, previewing the final game of the 2021 preseason. For Jason Gibbs, I'm Andrew Gribble. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to the best podcast available.